All right, so in this example, what we're being asked is where is the intersection points? And so hopefully if you have some understanding of conic sections, you recognize that this is the equation of a circle and this is the equation of a hyperbola. And so they could have a couple of points, like they could you know, not intersect maybe at all. They could intersect maybe at one point, um, two points, or possibly even four points. That's just kind of based on my you know, understanding of the shape of these two graphs. Okay, um, and but we don't know where they're at. So what we need to be able to do is like, you could graph these, like, you know, if you know how to graph um, a circle, this was not really that nice though, because the radius is going to be, you know, the square root of seven, 2.645. And, and then here's a hyperbola, but I don't know. I don't know if that's the best uh, solution to be able to find these intersection points. What I would do is kind of go back to how we learned how to solve system of equations. Remember if you had an equation that looked like this. Right? If I said, all right, here's a system of equations, you know, how do you solve for x and y? Like, where do these two lines meet? Well, a lot of times what we do is, since we had the same coefficients here for our x and our y, we could just add these two equations up, that becomes zero, this becomes a 2y is equal to a 6, divide by 2, divide by 2, y is equal to a 3. Then we take the value 3, plug it into one of these equations, and go ahead and solve, and therefore these two lines are going to meet at one point. Right? So at four comma three is going to be their intersection point. But again, as I mentioned, when we're dealing with a hyperbola in a circle, we're not just gonna be dealing with, we're not automatically just gonna be dealing with one point. We could, but we don't know. There's many, many ways we could um, orient these um, two graphs to have multiple intersection points. However, the process and the thinking of how we solved this stuff system of equations back in the day, right, when math was nice and math was good, we can use that same thinking to solve this system of equations. Now, the problem though, or the one thing that was easy about this problem, and you're welcome, I gave a really easy example, is because these two coefficients were exactly the same, right? So it's one and negative one, so it was really easy. Now, over here, there's a couple things that I want you to kind of recognize here. I can rewrite it like this. Right, so you can rewrite, you know, one third x squared is the same thing as x squared over three, right? It's the exact same thing. So rather than rewriting it as division, you can rewrite it as multiplication. The reason why I think that is really important is because then I can recognize, oh, okay, these have coefficients of one, these have coefficients of fractions. So if I want to obtain to get them to be exactly the same, I gotta use a multiplier. Now, I'm not gonna wanna multiply my integers to get the fractions. What I'm thinking the easiest thing to do would be multiply my fractions to be able to get to integers. And the easiest one to kind of go through, I think, would just be multiplying this x squared by three, because three times one third is gonna give me one. That's exactly what I'm looking for. But I don't want them to be the same, right? Both positive, because a positive plus a positive gives me a two i. I want them to be one to be positive, one to be negative, so I can eliminate it, right? So I can get a zero x. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply this bottom equation here by a negative three. And make sure you do that to every single term, all right? Now, when I do that, I'm gonna now get a new system of equations. Okay, so now when I wanna go ahead and add these two up, um, the cool thing is now I'm going to eliminate my x, right? Because that's x squared plus a negative x squared, so it's gonna be zero x squared. I don't need to write that as zero. Um, in this case though, remember that's a one, right? So what we have here is a, Let's kind of maybe do this on, oh, I can do it over here. So one, right, plus, what am I doing? One plus a one third. Well, how do you add a whole number to a fraction? Well, remember guys, you can rewrite one as a three over three, right? Three over three plus a one third. Oh, three over three plus one third is going to be a four thirds. So what I have here is a four thirds, y squared is equal to a four. Whew. Okay, I gotta solve for y, right? So what I'm gonna do is multiply by the reciprocal right, because any number multiplied by its reciprocal, guys, is just gonna equal one. So therefore, I'll have a y squared is equal to, the fours are gonna divide out, right, because that's technically a four over one, and that's gonna be a y squared is equal to three. Now, I can introduce the square root to solve for y, and y is now going to give me a plus or minus a square root of three. So, we have two y coordinates where I'm gonna have an intersection point. Now, what I need to do is just like I did over here, right, so once I found my y, what do you do? You take your y and you plug it into one of your equations. Does it matter which equation? 
No, it doesn't matter which equation. Plug it into one of them. I chose to plug it into this one because mathematically it was a little bit easier to solve than this one. Um, because all I had to do was just subtract the three on both sides and I got my x. Over here, I, I don't think you need to be a rocket scientist to determine like which, when, which equation would be better to go ahead and plug in square root of three and negative square root of three. Now here's the cool thing though. Does it really matter if you plug in a positive and a negative? No, because what are you doing with the y? You're gonna be squaring it anyways, right? So it doesn't matter. We just need to understand that you're gonna have your two solutions from on there. So you have the positive and the negative, but I'm only gonna do it once because if once I do it for a square root of three, I'm gonna get the same answer as if I were to plug in a negative square root of three, because again, my y is being squared, okay? Our positive squared is positive and a negative squared is also positive. So I'm gonna plug into the half equation because I don't wanna deal with negatives. Okay, and the square root of three squared, or negative square root of three squared, is just going to be equal to a three. X squared plus three is equal to seven. Subtract to three, subtract to three, x squared is equal to a four. And therefore, so now you can take the square root of both sides, right? So now I'm kind of running out of space. So I'll leave that there. So now you can say that a x is going to equal square root of both sides, just like I did over here. It's going to be a plus or minus a two. We gotta understand what's, what's going on here. We have two values for x, right? and we have two values for y. So again, when I had the positive square root of three, that gave me two solutions. The negative square root of three, that gave me two solutions as well. I know, it sounds confusing. So let's go ahead and write them out. Here are going to be your coordinate point, your solutions. I'm gonna have a two, that's gonna go with the square root of three. I'm also gonna have a positive two, which is going to go with the negative square root of three, right? You gotta have both those. But then we gotta do that for a negative two. Negative two goes with square root of three, and a negative two goes with a negative square root of three. And again, guys, that can make sense, right? Um, a lot of times you're like, how does it have four system equations? Well, let's just superimpose one equation on the other, right? You could see that it could work something like that. So it, there indeed, a circle in this case, intersect with the hyperbola four times. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. And if it was, then I know you're gonna enjoy the next video I have for you here.